Yo yo, what's up yo, it's your boy King Yediya, aka King Solomon, staying wise in life and in these markets like the ancient king did. And um, today is gonna be a different kind of video, I'm gonna be screen recording my phone because I'm at work right now, doing a little um, overnight double shift. And um, so I'm not in front of my computer, so I'm gonna screen record my phone and I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do a fundamental analysis on how I got into this trade on um, Euro JPY, right? So, like in my in my journal book, right? Instead of just journaling, I'm actually gonna start writing down my fundamental analysis, making a summary of it, and coming up with uh, I guess like a conclusion of my fundamental analysis and this is going to incorporate um, the bond market the commodities market and um, the equities market and then gather from that a risk sentiment right so anyway let's start off so in my journaling book, I'ma I'm just I'ma make the header Thursday, 25th February 2021, and the starting header is fundamental analysis, right? So for the bond market, I'm looking at the MUB, right? That's the ticker we're looking at. So at looking looking at the chart, right? I can see that the the bond market sold off pretty aggressively today, right? So when the when the bond market is selling off that means that it's a risk on sentiment right it's meaning that a lot of things are going to be bullish because the bond market is a safe haven so when people rem remove money from the bond market it's creating liquidity it's putting money in people's hands to go invest in riskier um, you know markets so for the MUB, I have, um, let's see, the high was 115.46, the low was 115.17, and it closed at 115.24. So it closed near the highs, right? So for that, I put a sentiment, I, I put a little note saying the bond market has sold off considerably on the day. Sentiment, strong bullish, right? Then we go to the yields market, the 30 year yields, which is the ticker TYX. And I wrote, broke above the R4, which is the Camarilla level. Like if I'm looking at the chart, broke above the R4 with a huge upper wick back to previous candle open. So the high was at 240, 2.40. The low was 2.06. And the close was 2.31 which was close to the high so the yield market the 30 year yields that was up on the day the 10 year yield which is the tnx that's the ticker tnx that broke above the r4 major week rejection 61 percent retracement right the high was 1.61 the low was 1.18 the close was 1.52 which was near to the high so 10 year yields broke above the r4 strong on the day then we have the fvx that's the five year yield so i wrote 50 percent retracement on previous four hour candle before a smaller push-up effort closing candle broke way above r4 so i don't know if you gotta repeat that or just pull it back it's the five year yield 50 percent retracement on the previous four hour candle before the close a smaller push-up effort on the closing candle before um broke way above the r4 so the the last candle push-up effort closing candle broke way above the r4 right but it was a smaller candle to the previous candle so the high on that on the the five year yield was 8.65 the low was 4.72 and the close was 8.02 which was close to the high again so the sentiment on that one was bullish as well right for the 10 year yield that was bullish as well so the us dollar 
three strong candles on the four hour chart with very good volume testing our tree now breaking above so the high on that was 11,669 the low was 11,567 and at time of writing which was 728 eastern time it was 11,666 very close to the high so the sentiment on the US dollar is bearish right because with a strong US dollar which is also a safe haven if this is um if these are moving up like that strong upward candles and stuff like that with good volume that means that the the risk sentiment in the market is bearish right so for the spy i put um sold off all day heavy volume support found at previous day hammer candle low and the high was 394.16 the low was 380.25 the close was 382.39 bearish sentiment the VIX broke out way above R4 huge blue candle no wick closing candle wicked out to form a shooting star the high was 31.2 the low was 20.8 and the close was 28.9 so I also went to the um, commodities market the Thompson commodities I think the ticker for that is TRJ or something like that I don't have it pulled up on my screen right now but just type in Thompson routers commodities and you should find it so with that I put broke way above the R4 created an ABC pullback pattern for a continuation to the upside the high was 195.314 the low was 183.412 and the close was 194.588 so the close was very close very high to the the high so we closed on a high with the commodities as well and the sentiment for that was bullish so we're bullish in the commodities market which is a risk on environment and for bonds we are let's see what did i say again for bonds we are strong bullish so the bonds the bonds um they're buying the bonds like crazy right i don't know if i made a mistake earlier but they're buying the bonds like crazy so that means it's a risk off sentiment meaning they're taking out it's a risk on sentiment so if they if they um if bond market is high that means that um actually no bond market sold off so it's strong bullish right my bad i'm watching through papers and stuff here getting a little mixed up so the bond market sold off all day so that's that's bullish for the the entire market in general so with the commodities market also being bullish that's very risk on environment for all markets let's see oil copper gold wheat cattle corn soy milk all of these are commodities they were all up on the day right so the sentiment for commodities is bullish right and also for um, the index markets the the exchanges across the world like the spy the ni225 which is the japanese market the AU200, the N100, the UK100, all of these had like um, a bearish sentiment, right? And um, for, J for JPY, right, we had a news release of the Tokyo Core CPI, which was in actuality, it came out better than the forecast. So the forecast was minus 0.4 we came out at minus 0.3 so that's good for the currency gave it some strength um, we also had the prelim industrial production fundamental release um, that shows great improvement we had a forecast of 3.9 we got 4.2 and we also had a um, let's see the yen has shown an average of 
5.14 on the currency heat wave app so i use the heat wave app so when i when i check these releases i went over to the um, currency heat wave app to see you know what's the reactions on the yen and the yen was maintaining like an average of like 5.14 which is just above average right so with all that um sentiment analysis with the bond market the equities market the um, commodities market um this is what i came with came up with right so market fundamentals and sentiment summary money has clearly left the bond market and yields have risen considerably the commodity sector has contributed in terms of gains from money flowing into its coffers with big moves to the upside risk on currencies have taken a beating while safe haven currencies look strong equities markets sold off all around the world except japan held up considerably i think although bonds bonds a safe haven sold off i think the money went into prop propping up the equities market example the spy and buying some yen and investing in some commodities so i think even though money came out of the bonds market it was just really to buy the dip on the spy and stuff like that and also to invest in some of the yen and in commodities that that was my thinking right so the peers i came in to focus with for me off of this um summary right the peers i looked at was euro jpy and nzd new zealand jpy so the reason i focus on euro jpy i'm focusing on this peer because the n100 which is the euro stock stock exchange is still weak the euro is weak and the jpy n is strong with positive fundamental releases behind it in favor of a risk off environment right so that means the yen is going to get stronger while the euro is still the stock exchange for the euro is still looking weak right so that was my reason for picking that and for the new zealand yen the reason is second in line because nzd can still strengthen because of the influx of money into the commodities right so remember i was saying commodities they were kind of high on the day and new zealand exports a lot of commodities so you could expect at any time that the new zealand dollar is going to get strong and it will kind of it will it will obliterate that trade you know what i'm saying if you selling cuz i'm looking for like a it's a risk off environment i'm looking at right and euro jpy as a sell is good for a risk off environment right because we're selling the euro which is risk on and buying the jpy which is which is a safe haven right so at 914 i took a sell position at 129.028 on euro jpy off of a break low at 128.972 retraced to 129.509 Push back to 128.974, retraced and formed a lower high at 129.236. Took a sell for break of low of the day and continuation of of the downtrend lower. Stop loss at 129.600, lot size 0.05, 50 cents per pip. I plan on adding to my position on the break low of the day slash retest and push lower stop loss around 129.250 and I'll probably take out a $3 lot size for that right um, so moving up fast forward into what's actually happening right now right so let's see so I took this my second sell entry was triggered in as a sell stop at 128.849 stop loss is now at 129.200 and the take profit is now at 128.150 
my first sell entry was at 129.028 that stop loss has now moved to 129.200 and with the same take profit as 128.150 so yeah that's how i came up with this trade today man i'm just doing a little more fundamentals in in my trades and stuff and um hopefully it works out it works out for the best you know what i'm saying because the more information you have behind taking your trades is the more solid your trades become you know what i'm saying so we're just trying to be more profitable and more sound traders you know what i'm saying more sound in fundamental analysis and technical analysis as well because to to take these trades i also fit it in with where price is on the chart or what's happening on the chart could we get a good move lower right and one of the reasons i took the euro jpy over the nzd jpy was that there was less resistance in the in the direction of the trade right there was a little support zone to the left on nzd and euro jpy had a clear path straight to my target you know so um that's why i took i took euro jpy over nzd jpy you know what i'm saying so yeah man it's your boy king yediya aka king solomon staying wise in life and in these markets like the ancient king did and y'all stay tuned man you know like the video subscribe to my channel my channel and um we just gonna be coming with more you know what i'm saying like even though i'm at work you see i'm still trying to make a video for y'all it's not it's not like my previous videos but it'll just be like a screenshot of my phone while while i'm doing all of this you know what i'm saying so yeah you'll stay with your boy you know what i'm saying blessings blessings